and welcome to my back porch. So today I'm using a what used to be at the bottom of a container of those really sweet cherry or grape tomatoes and a new purple. My efforts with purple to this point have been not pleasing to me so I decided to try a darker deeper purple. So I bought the darkest one I can find, dioxazine, and uh, if it's just sitting by itself, it almost looks black. So the lighter purple in there is just a mix, a lightened version of that that I added some um, white to. And then this is just a medium green that I mixed from um, some blues and yellows that I had. So I, this little uh, plastic round tray has four holes in it and up to this point I just let the paint spill out of them and then when I got ready to, to take this up I decided to you know force it out and that actually caused some muddying that you'll see at the end of the uh, um, <clears throat> at the end of the video where you can see one edge looks really nice and that's the edge where I kept more of the outside part on it and then the one where I poured the paint over and so mostly it's the center part that ends up on that end. It's quite muddied and I, so I en end up adding uh, a ribbon to it, which really helped. So I guess, uh, you know, part of my problem with um, purple is that I just, I think there's two things. It's not in my top 10 favorite colors to start with, but I also feel like I never know what to put it with. So I tried the green, and I knew that that would, could very easily cause um, muddying. Um, I've tried it in other pores. Um, I had a different uh, medium hue type purple that I tried, and I did not get good results with that either. So here I am trying to pour off most of that muddy part, and I love the white lightning that goes up the middle of it. That that I really liked, this, this whole right-hand side of it. But I decided to go ahead and pour a ribbon to give it, um, you know, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, flare or something for the eye to go to and just not be a bunch of purple and green all over the place. So here I mixed up a little bit and uh, I even scooped up some that had fallen off the side um, and gave it a little stir and then loop-de-looped. A ribbon I went ahead and poured over the same ribbon until I got all of what was in there out and I'm going to tip it to kind of spread it a little bit but when I was finished I realized that I had two choices I needed to either add a dark or a white and I chose to add dark so what I did is off camera is that I mixed just the dioxazine purple to do that final loop with and it it's it's almost a black it's such a deep purple um so i really like the way all of this part turned out and i love the right hand side on its own with that lightning kind of look in there so i feel like with this piece i am um, i'm really happy with the way it turned out i'm just still need someone to leave me a comment to tell me what to do with purple um, what other colors that you can, you know, that it can be used with that, I don't know, are, are more pleasing. Uh, so this one, I got the colors from, you know, you see a lot of quilts done, uh, like violets. Um, the green and purple is pretty common with floral kind of things. So, but look, I got some terrific cells in there. I did not use any... Um, silicone or anything with this particular painting and right through there that's that uh, first um, ribbon that I poured and then I poured the darker over it so uh, the still pictures are coming up it dried really bright really nice when it dried and um, yeah so there it goes and I've got some close-up pictures too so if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe if you would like to, and uh, leave me a comment, especially if you have any tips and pointers about using purple. Um, and thank you for tuning in.